the blind person's vision. Sisu. The origin of the material in writing can only be myself. I is not I, of course, because it is I with the others, coming from the others, putting me in the others' place, giving me the others' eyes, which means there is something common. You say that there cannot be autobiographical writing. I am quite conscious of this. There can be those intriguing fractures of the self that are called confessions. For me, there are works, books. We can call this autobiography, but it's one version, the blind person's version. From Sisu's notebook. What I love in him as I love the truth itself is the expression of the truth, the flexion, the genuflexion, the ingenuflexion, the way his thought always forms a single body with the objects of thought in their flexibility, the way he never thinks as a spectator standing or sitting on the exterior of the trail of the world, but he always thinks the world in the world, embracing the movements, the courses, not separating himself from the sometimes rapid, sometimes immobile dance of beings. End notebook text. When you said... I could have said that about Hélène. I thought, perhaps. And yet I sense that there is a difference here between Derrida's position and my own. For example, it seems to me, but perhaps I am mistaken. You see, here I am obliged to talk about myself. I go into uncertainty. Laughs. That I describe him differently. His attitude at the window of himself, it is a way of making the jealousy of oneself work, the jealousy of me with regard to me. This is what he expressed in the regret of not having been present at his own circumcision, a mourning relationship to oneself. This is what I find in Stondal. Oh, how I would like to know him. This Stondal or this Bale or this Prula. It's too bad. That is the only person I will never know. A magnificent and cruel envy. It is something incredible to think that the observer of human beings, Stondal, Shakespeare, the mirror carried along the ways, will have been the only one not to have been observed by the observer. I do not believe that I have this affect. My curiosity, because it is a question of curiosity, of desire, is not oriented towards, uh, I would like to have known that person, but towards concrete present phenomena. It is not a jealousy of the past or the jealousy of the future anterior. For example, in Circumfession, Derrida evokes what will have been, for me, the question of blood throughout his whole life? It is a fascinating movement of bringing together. I see in him this brilliant explorational cast, which brings him to discover structures or logics that have never before been thought, to sketch the course of rivers that flow in the inter-conscious zones. Now I sense that, while being fascinated by this path-making, I would not go that way. This is, I believe, the lengthy and broad gesture of bringing together the diachronic aptitude that I do not have. Notebook text. Archimedes thought like this. Each time he found something, he started criticizing his mode of discovery and searching other modes of demonstration. He deconstructed himself, searching to make the demonstration independent of the discovery. Not to take the discovery as proving took subjectivity into account. Archimedes says, these are experiments of thought. In other words, it comes from me. Give me the fulcrum and I will lift the world. And he knew that the earth was round and that there was no fulcrum. There is no fixed point. End notebook text. In other words, I have a different relationship to preservation, to loss, to the persistence of the past, etc., to all the affects, emotions, attitudes aroused by the mysteries of time, to forgetting, memory, anamnesis. These are themes that occupy me, him also, and to which I respond with a music that is different from his. But what will mobilize my thinking attention is the appearance of a sign, of an insistence, in the vital river, a new haunting, the apparition of an unknown feeling. Fantasies, phantoms, figures of dream, of thought, we change, we ourselves, in the present, are the site of innumerable events. 
I have an instinct for spotting things. I am an astrophysicist of minuscule stars. Clearly, this is a metaphor. It's also the desire of a near-sighted person. Laughs. Karl Gruber. The desire for the telescope. Sisu. Telescope and microscope. And binoculars for the word. I owe some of the most fantastical, hallucinatory experiences of my childhood to my extreme nearsightedness. Vanishing streets, substitutions, metaphorization and metonymization of the world and of people. And above all the need, indissociable from my very nature, from my way of seeing and thus of thinking, to go see everything very, very close up, so as to see, and consequently, the development of a vision that is hyper-attentive to details. My approach as a scrutinizing ant, my sensitivity to the least sign. I also have the ears of a blind person, because I use my ears to see better. I also have the imagination of a blind person, because there are nocturnal hours when I do not see. I have always known that my foresight was born of my blindness, that my passionate desire to think further came from the desperate effort of my eyes to pierce the darkness. And also, my myopia is like my writing. These are fertile congenital disabilities. I have never known the state of a person whose eyes see the world as it is supposed to be seen by seeing human eyes. I have never known the state of a person capable of living without the aid of a magic instrument like writing. N.B. The complicated combination of myopia and astigmatism has always meant that I could not be corrected, as they say. I am incorrigible. Notebook text. Very complex to develop. All that is lost is not lost. What is lost is lost. No fear, no regret. So be it. End notebook text. Yes, I owe a lot to this ocular chance. My myopia is my daily secret. I see the invisible more easily than the visible. So I close my eyes, and I see the landscape of the soul. It's hell. It's heaven. And I say to myself, my God, there is a star I had not seen, even though it was there, clearly. I say, a star. It is more punctual. For example, you spoke a little while ago of Kafka's door, of Thomas Bernard's tuberculosis. Clearly, you will tell me, it is the story of Thomas Bernard's tuberculosis. But I prefer not to say it in this way. It is true that my role is closer to the theatre, to the scene of the body, than Derrida. I will not do the philosophy of tears because I will use my strength to work on the physical phenomena that accompany tears, but that are indicators of the direction of the passions. That will then connect up with a philosophy, etc. Karl Gruber Not biography, which is understood as history, collecting. And from this point of view, it does not correspond to your approach. On the other hand, it seems to me that I catch a glimpse of you in a certain present of writing, sticking out your neck, sticking out one of your heads, which tries to look towards the other. Notebook text question of the time of mourning. I do not cry in advance. I do not précédé. Feeling of grace stronger than everything with me in the combat between joy and mourning. End notebook text. Sisu. Not the head, the body. The entrails. Of the soul also. I think I am more contained. What Derrida expresses at times is a vital curiosity with respect to those types of primitive scenes that elude us and that have caused him. I think that I do not have such a vast desire or project in me. I do not have that sublime physicist's intelligence, which is to say that it is less the enigma of myself. It is rather the thirst for the phenomenon of an instant. Of course, at times I go back towards the source, but I am perhaps more inclined to the study of symptoms. Perhaps I am mistaken. Perhaps what I feel is entirely false. I do not know myself. I should not say anything about myself.